Hello and welcome to the second episode of Let's Talk About Mental Health. And this episode we're going to be focusing on kind of BAME. I didn't even introduce myself. I'm Bandy, the Rusu Welfare Officer. Um, and if you haven't already, check out the first ever episode where I talk about like my anxiety and how I like, dealt through it through university and how I managed it. Also another plug is that myself, Rachel Osborne and myself um, kind of launched a podcast called More Than a Grad, kind of focusing on like housing, money, relationship issues, like finding your identity through university, any, any problem we've probably spoken about. It is on Spotify. Um, and yes, so, and also I did say this in my last episode, but I just want to disclaim like all my opinions are my own. Any information that I do kind of talk about and give, I've def I've kind of outsourced it from a credible websites like mental health charities and like BBC News and and stuff like that. But I do want to say that I'm not like a trained psychologist. I did do psychology for four years, but yes, just to, just to put that put it out there. But yes, so I thought, Bay mental health. I think it's. It's so, like, I'm an Asian woman, so it directly affects me. But I think, you know, looking at kind of national campaigns and, like, initiatives and stuff, it's never really been, like, the main focus. I think recently it's been a little bit more topical because of COVID and, like, research has kind of found that, pe like, um, BAME people are affected by COVID much more. Like, they have worse, like, mental health issues. And this is kind of you know, it's kind of, this is what BAME people are already facing, but it's been exacerbated by COVID, basically. Um, institutional racism, systematic, like, I could go on and on about it. But, um, yes, so, in, I thought of kind of not assuming knowledge, and I thought about kind of talking about what BAME is, and that is basically Black, Asian, Minority, Ethnic, and that could include, so I've got this information from Rethink, a charity, and they've done like a fact sheet for Black History Month. Um, so that could include Black African, Black Caribbean people, Asian and East Asian, and can also include mixed race. And it kind of sums up like 14.1% of like England and Wales from the last consensus. That's where this information is from. Um, so, pain mental health, where do I begin? Um, I think, like, there is, like, a massive barrier for BAME people to even access mental health. Um, so I was kind of, like, do, while I was doing my research for this, um, I looked on a Twitter account called Black in Mental Health. Um, I'll link it down below. It's really good. I read a lot of, like, threads and tweets, and this one girl asked, like, how, like, what what is the biggest barrier for for her followers to not access mental health and a lot of people replied but i think the general gist of it was like cost representation and culture and i guess representation and culture kind of like intertwine together um and i guess it it's nice to it like it's nice to have a therapist that does look like you but obviously it doesn't necessarily guarantee that they will know your like understand your cultural background but it's kind of like one less worry I guess because I mean I've I've been to therapy multiple times had like counsellors and therapists within the NHS and private but I guess it's kind of that for me it's me personally but it's like the therapists I've had, they've been really, really lovely, really open to, to understanding like my culture. I'm like Nepalese. So, but it is, I guess for some people, it is like emotional labor to like try to explain to someone over again and again, like this is my cultural background. This is why my parents think like this, um, et cetera, et cetera. So I guess to have someone from that same cultural sphere just is just one less job to do when you're in therapy which I kind of understand and get um and the cost side of it is that like it is known that um BAME people come from more lower socioeconomic backgrounds so to access private therapy for instance is 
a lot more harder. Um, it costs, you know, like private therapy is about fifty pounds to a hundred pounds sometimes. I know there's NHS, but that is also a very long waiting list, and it is a bit of a triage system. So if you're not severely mentally unwell, you just won't be seen for like two years, um, which is like a whole nother video in itself. But um, yes, and I really, really recommend like looking at this Twitter because um, a doctor called Brianna Baker, I think she's like American. She like collated data and it's kind of talking about like racial trauma and transgender transgenerational trauma explained um which is you know only have 10 minutes for this video but i highly recommend checking it out um and i'll just like define what it is but it's empirically supported idea that trauma can be passed down from one generation to the next this is what we call psychic legacy. Um, so, and it's kind of supported by epigenetics. And if you're really interested in that, um, it is linked down below. Um, I guess like the next thing while I was doing my research for this video is that I came across a DJ who was a former Bristol student and her she's called Vanessa Wilson and I'll link this down below it was like a BBC article about her and it was like a one minute video but she basically did like a documentary and and like could have interviewed like black students from Bristol and she and they basically said like how alienated they feel and how like like it's that you know they have this kind of like thinking that if they even go to a therapist or counsellor at uni they won't understand like their struggles and um i think there was really something really poignant that this one guy said and he said how he feels like the wellness industry is really whitewashed and how he feels like like wellness and mental health and looking after himself hasn't really ever been targeted to to bane people ever and i definitely like like agree to that like I'm really into like the wellness and health and like looking after yourself kind of like camp I guess and like even if I go on to like Instagram or YouTube or Facebook it's it is always mostly like white like it is mostly just white people um and I guess for me like it's it's hard because sometimes if you don't see the people you look up to you don't ever feel heard I think like that is such a big problem and I think with with my family for instance like cultural barriers um was that um in in Asian culture like shame sh like mental mental health kind of mental illness kind of brings a lot of shame within the family so when I was kind of getting um treatment for my anxiety my mum was very like um she was she was a bit like well why she was a bit upset that she like the problem couldn't be sorted out within within the family she didn't understand that like it she yeah it's so it's so hard to like talk about um but yeah she found it really difficult that I had to go to an external person and talk about my feelings and stuff outside of the family um and that's just my own experience by the way, like, I don't think that's, I'm not generalising that to all Asian families by any means. Um, so, yeah, I feel like I haven't, like, there's so much, like, I really want to cover. If you really like me to do a part two of this video, um, and maybe go into, like, I mean, I don't mind, like, go into, like, my own, like, personal experiences with, like, cultural barriers within mental health and stuff please let me know and I hope you've enjoyed this kind of little bit of a whistle stop like short video um but yes I hope to see you in the third one bye